Welcome to Lesson 6, Preparing the Statement of Cash Flows Using the Indirect Method. Recall from Lesson 5 that we prepared the Statement of Cash Flows for Mike's bike business, and we called this method the Direct Method. Well, it was called the Direct Method because all cash changes that were classified as operating activities directly from our database were transferred over to this statement. So recall from our database that there were four items entitled uh, operating activities right there. And that was for insurance, advertising, and bikes, uh, purchase of bikes. And we also took in some cash from selling bikes. So going back to our statement of cash flows using the direct method, uh, we came up with $16,600. Well, today, we want to come up with the same number, except uh, I'll show you the end result of today, except that 16,600 will come as a result of taking our net income from our income statement and working down to our cash flow from operations, which we know to be $16,600. So uh, we'll come back to this in a moment, but for now folks, let's go back to the income statement for a moment. On our income statement, we took revenues less one, two, three, four, five expenses to get 16,550. Most people who've never had an accounting course do not know the difference between net income or what I would call pure cash income from operations, which is 16,6. And so the indirect method simply takes our income right there and compares it with our cash flow from operations right there. So let me open a new spreadsheet and look here. It's called comparing net income with cash flow from operations. So our net income here starts with revenues and it subtracts one, two, three, four, five expenses. So all we've done is we've eliminated blank lines and all subtotals, but that number right there is the same as our income statement number right there that's nice and formal. But when we compare net income with pure cash income, it's helpful to take all of our cash inflows and outflows from operations and set them right next to our revenues and our expenses. But notice here that our cash flows from operations include one, two, three, just four items getting this 16,600. So here we can take our four cash flow from operation items and see that the total of these four equals 16,600 as we know it does right there. So kind of like a surgeon preparing for surgery, we take all of our revenues and expenses from our income statement and then we compare that with all of our cash collected from customers. We put that next to our revenues to see if there's any difference and in this case there isn't any. What about cash paid for inventory vis-a-vis -vis cash expense, or uh, amount expensed? Again, the amount expensed was 10,000, the amount we paid for inventory was 10. There's no difference. Next, advertising. We expensed 1,000, we paid 1,000. No difference. However, for depreciation expense, we subtracted 500 to arrive at net income, but there was no cash effect here under the cash column. So we go from minus 500 to zero by adding depreciation expense. Next, we bought insurance for $2,400 right there, but we only expensed or used up 200 to get from minus 200 on the income statement to minus 2400 in the cash flow statement. We've got to go minus two to minus 24, we got to subtract 2200 more. So there's another difference between income and cash flow. Finally, we expense $1,750 for interest on that loan to the bank, but we haven't paid the bank any interest yet. So to compare these two measurement systems, under accrual accounting, we have income of $16,550. Under cash basis accounting, we have $16,600. For this interest, we subtracted $1,750 here, but we haven't yet paid any. To get from a large negative number to zero, we must add $1,750. Now, when you add up all the income statement numbers, you get $16,550.
When you add up all the cash flow numbers, you get 16.6. The sum of all the differences here should be $50, which they are. Now, instead of doing this worksheet internally for a company by comparing our income with our cash flow from operations, what most companies do is they start with this number, net income, and they prepare what we call a reconciliation that goes down the page rather than across the page. So we take 16,550 and we know there are one, two, three differences. We've got to add $500 for depreciation. We've got to subtract $2,200 for the insurance difference. And we have to do what? We have to add $1,750 for that interest difference. So to get from here to here, we go 16,550 plus 500 plus 1750 minus 2200 and this folks is called the reconciliation of net income to cash income but instead of going across the page here we can start with net income right here and go down the page same thing in fact let's highlight all of that in yellow and now in closing this video on lesson six the formal statement of cash flows using the indirect method simply takes the reconciliation that we've done on our worksheet here and transfer it over to our statement of cash flows using what we call the indirect method. The cash flows from, uh, from our investing activities, and there's a typo there, will be the same as the other method, the what I'd call the direct method and the cash flow from financing activities are also the same. So the only difference here is how we calculate cash flow from operations. To conclude, the statement of cash flows directly, that comes right from our database. Our right answer is 16,600. But if someone says, Kurt or Dr. DeBerg, why is that number different from income of 16,550? The smart thing to do would be to compare our net income items by parking our revenues next to cash collections and parking our expenses right next to our cash payments. This concludes Lesson 6.